Studies have shown that men outnumber women two to one in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, or STEM characters we see. Furthermore, while women account for over half of the college-educated workforce, they only account for less than one-third of the science and engineering workforce. This is important because nearly four out of five young women and girls said it was important for them to see other women in STEM. The ma vast majority of women and girls who plan to pursue a career in STEM said that popular women in STEM and media inspired them to pursue their major or career. So why does this all matter? It matters a lot. It's a matter of life or death. For example, crash test dummies used to test the impact of car accidents are based on the average male. Crash test dummies were first introduced in the 1950s. And for decades, they were around the 50th percentile of male. In the early 1980s, researchers argued for the inclusion of a 50th percentile female in regulatory tests. But this advice was ignored by manufacturers and regulators. It wasn't until 2011 that the U.S. started to use a female crash test dummy. Although, as we'll see, just how female these dummies are is questionable. They are just one example of design that forgets women and puts lives at risk. When a woman is involved in a car crash, she is 47% more likely to be seriously injured and 71% more likely to be moderately injured, even when researchers control for factors such as height, weight, seatbelt usage, and crash intensity. She is also 17% more likely to die. The situation is even worse for pregnant women. Since the pandemic, we've all been encouraged to wear masks. We know it can save lives. Doctors and other emergency service professionals are required to wear well-maintained personal protective equipment, or PPE, every day. This includes said masks, goggles, and sometimes full body suits. But most PPE is, you guessed it, based on the sizes and characteristics of the male population. Often employers and supervisors think that when it comes to female workers, all they need to do to remedy the situation is suggest smaller sizes. Only 5% of women say that their PPE has never hampered their work. That means for 95% of women, this can lead to fatal outcomes. To take this a level deeper, differences in chest, hips, and thighs can affect the way the straps fit on safety harnesses, body armor, and stab vests. The use of the standard U.S. male face for dust, hazard, and eye masks means they don't fit most women, as well as, in a lot of cases, Black and minority ethnic men. Lack of representation is leaving people unprotected. So why does this all matter? It's a matter of life and death. In the tech world, the implicit ass assumption is that men are the default human. When Apple launched their AI, Siri, users in the US found that she ironically could find prostitutes and Viagra suppliers, but not abortion providers. Siri could help you if you had a heart attack, but if you told her you'd been raped, she'd say, I don't know what you mean by, I was raped. And while there's an increasing number of women-led tech firms that do cater to women's needs, they're often seen as a niche concern and often struggle to get funding from venture capitalists. In 2019, women received only 2.8% of venture funding. This number in 2020 decreased to 2.3%. But where are we going wrong? Why are there less women scientists and technologists in the room? Research from the past decade definitively shows that gender differences in ability do not account for the gender gap in STEM. In general, 
boy and girl students perform equally well in STEM subjects on standardized tests in K through 12 education. And girls slightly outscore boys on assessments of technology and engineering literacy. Many causes have been identified as contributing to this gender gap. Stereotyping of boring white coats amplified by media, lack of encouragement from parents and teachers, and discrimination. But what research suggests to be the leading cause of why women choose to not go into STEM is because they feel like they do not belong in the field. They learn this early on, and their experiences in middle and high school are especially crucial. While the number of women students taking AP Computer Science has quadrupled since 2014, and that's incredible, the reality is the, women, the number of women taking the AP Computer Science exam has only gone from 22% to 29%. We still have a lot of work to do. So how do we fix this? This lies in the simple truth. If you can see it, then you can be it. It is important for young girls to see women in STEM on TV, in their textbooks, and in their museums, so they can picture themselves in those roles. For me, I started my career in artificial intelligence and quantum computing in an environment of just men. I found myself repleting my energy stores to prove to others that I belonged, that I also fit in. It wasn't until I met other women technologists that I had my aha moment. There are others like me. Together, we're changing the narrative that permeates our society and implementing strategies to reach young girls and open their eyes to STEM careers. We're changing the image of scientists to make it more diverse. It's not just about men versus women, but it's about diverse experiences, backgrounds, and new futures. We are also working to identify spaces where women in STEM simply do not exist. And we're going exactly there. Did you know that up until 2020, there were more statues of dogs in New York Central Park than there were of real women? In fact, in the 10 largest US cities, fewer than six statues of real women are publicly displayed. Later this year, a monumental exhibit will debut in Dallas. It'll be the first time that the most statues of women ever assembled in one location at one time. It'll feature 122 contemporary women STEM professionals and role models from a variety of industries, including science, technology, entertainment, sports, business, and academia. This exhibit lies at the belief that if you show a little girl what women in STEM are accomplishing today, then that little girl will believe that she too can be a force for that positive change. So to everyone in the room, I want you to think about how there's a scientist in all of us. Each of us see the world differently and each of you has something to offer. So I will leave you with this question. How will you engage with diverse media to fight the bias in the world? And to those that identify as women in the room, what will you do to make you monumental? Who we choose to honor with a statue says a lot about our culture's values. Now, I'd like to close the same way we started. Close your eyes. This time, I want you to picture yourself as a scientist, any kind of scientist. How will you share your perspective? It could be a matter of life and death. Thank you.